greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and our soon coming King. Mighty God, I'm so excited, I'm so delighted to be here one more time in the presence of God. I am thrilled, I am so happy that God has kept me in this time and also in this season. Glory be to God. As you see my topic, don't be discouraged because of offense or by offense. Offense is a must. It will come. The Lord has warned us that offense or person will offend you. And you have to keep your focus in this time. The enemy tried to offend you because you don't want you to be in heaven or in the presence of God. But I come to encourage you that don't be discouraged because of offense. Don't be discouraged because of what persons say to offend you. Don't be discouraged mm -hmm. because of what person did not turn up. Don't be discouraged because somebody speaks stuff about you. Let me say this to you. Offense itself is not dangerous. It's when you hug up the offense is what kills you. If somebody says something bad about you, greetings, kingdom greetings to everybody, right? If somebody says something bad about you, huh? you don't need to respond because the Lord will leave all vengeance unto him. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Now, there is a word that comes to my mind. I don't come to spend long. I just come to just give a few, few encouraging words because I realize that people have been discouraged in this time and this in this season and let me start with this scripture just for your knowledge the bible said that in joshua joshua chapter 1 verse 9 joshua chapter 1 verse 9 it said that be be strong and courageous be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the lord your god will be with you wherever you go let me say this again just for you just for your knowledge. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let me say this. Offense is a must. You can't walk a Christian race and don't get offense. You can be offended by your family, by your child, by a church member, by misunderstanding. Whether it's in church, at work, on the street. But God is saying to you that to be strong. Uh -huh. Many many times persons offend me. But we are human beings and we are prone to feel the human side of it. But if you stay in the spirit of God, and if you want God to have the same spirit, then offense will not offend you, and you will never feel discouraged. Now, look at it. And a simple format. Uh -huh. The Bible said that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, we have in the same spirit of faith. When you have faith, you can't get offended. Uh, according as it is written I believe therefore have I spoken we also believe therefore speak I speak it because I believe it uh, Jesus Christ was offended as well but what was Jesus Christ's reaction to it uh, they call Jesus Christ false prophet uh -huh. they call him a carpenter's son. Uh -huh. They mocked him. They jeer him. Uh -huh. But none of this shift Jesus' mind. Shift Jesus' focus. I said, I'm saying to you, don't be discouraged. Because of offense. Let's continue. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Knowing that he which have risen up, Jesus Christ, shall raise you up. All, raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you offense offense is killing many of us 
Offense is killing many of us. Offense is what is causing bitterness and hatred. And that's what the devil wants. If the devil can offend you and you hold on to that offense, the devil win a battle. He wins something from you. He wins you. Because when you hold on to the offense, uh, and hold on to this and to the discouragement, you are telling the devil that, oh, it's you have all the legal right to have bitterness in my heart. You are telling the devil in a layman term that I open the door uh, for me to hate my brother. You are literally telling the adversary, ah, uh, when you hold on to the offense, ah, uh, to have resentment against he or she. You are literally giving the enemy the, the legal right or open the window to say that, okay, uh, let's have bad mind against the individual. Uh, or retaliation against the individual. That's what you're telling the devil. But when you let go, uh, the offense, or you have not been offended by the person's words or action, they can't win you. You know why? Because they offend you and because the Christ that is, 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 that is in you. <coughs> right? Because the Christ greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When you have Christ that living inside of you, huh? nobody can offend you. You know why? Because you constantly want to be in the presence of God. And we fail to understand that the Bible even want us warned us about offense. The Lord has warned us as people of God about offense. It will come. It's a must. It's part of life. It is part of your growth process. It is, it is, time, it is part of your faith in God. Let me prove something to you. Just for your knowledge. The Bible said that in St. Matthew chapter 18. St. Matthew chapter 18 verse 7. St. Matthew chapter 18 verse 7. The Bible said. Woe unto the world. Woe unto the world. So this not escape nobody. Whether you're a Christian or you're not Christian. Whether you believe in God or you're not believe in God. The Bible said that in St. Matthew chapter 18 verse 7. Woe unto the world. Because. Because. Hold on. Glory to God. I'm putting my phone on silence. Sorry about that. Right? Woe, St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world because, because of offense. Listen to it again. The Bible said that in St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world uh -huh. because of offense. People is going to offend you. You can't escape it. But in every action, there will be a reaction. In every action of your life, there will be a reaction. You can offend me. But the enemy is looking at my response. Let's continue here in St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Right? Because of offense. For it must need that that offense comes. It will come. It have to come. Uh -huh. But woe, and, but woe, that man... By whom the offense cometh, God is saying that it will come. I'm talking about offense here. You're too easily offended. Uh, and if you are easily to be offended, that means that is one of your weakness. Uh, nobody can offend me in this time and in this season. You know why? Because I try my very best to spend time with God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The reason why many of you guys are so offended is because you're not spending time with God. You are not spending time with God. Your prayer life has been taken up by, by various different types of way. By social media. Uh -huh. by, by, by bad company. And that's why you are easily offended. You see, why you think the Lord said to us as believers, the true kingdom of heaven is to be as humble as a child. The true kingdom of heaven 
is to be as humble as a child. When you're humble, you can spot, you can recognize, you can see from afar that offense is coming. You see the person's reaction before they actually do it. But when you're not humble, when you're ignorant, when you're dark, uh -huh, when you have a rage of anger, you are blind to offense. And automatically, the enemy said, okay, retaliate. Retaliate. Talk bad. Cuss her back. Cuss him back. Jesus Christ realized that people offended him. A lot of persons have been offended. A lot of prophets have been offended. Jesus Christ was, was offended by Peter himself. In St. Matthew chapter 16. Right? Jesus gave an, a command to Peter. Say, Peter, go to this country and to declare the word. Peter decided, oh, make a talk back to God. Talk back to Jesus Christ. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 16. Right? And Jesus Christ recognized it. But Jesus Christ rec did recognize that there is a spirit that was using Peter. And Jesus Christ rebuked that spirit. All of us as people have to go through offense. Moses go through offenses as well. Let me get a typical example. In the book of Numbers chapter 12. Uh -huh, Moses was decided to marry to an Ethiopian woman. A black woman. As we so called you may call it. Right? But Moses' sister, Prophetess Miriam. And Moses' brother, Hiran. Did not like who Moses is going to marry to. Ah, so they rise up against Moses by offending him who he chose. Ah, so all of us go through it. You are not immune to it. Offense will come, but it's how you deal with it. I said offense will come, but it's how you deal with it. There are people has offended me. People has offended you. But offense is when I hold on upon it so tight. This is when offense killed you. It kills your joy. It kills your peace. And it kills your love. Offense is like a cancer. Eat it out very slowly, but surely. You don't see it coming because you are so rage in hunger. Trying to get back at the individual. Uh -huh, because you heard that the individual says something about you. And many times it did not go like that. But because your rage in your feelings, in your emotions, in your mental space, in your main aim is to get back. Uh -huh, is to use revenge. But God is saying that offense is a must. It will come. It shall come. But it's how you deal with it. I said this to you in St. Luke chapter 17 verse 1. And he said to his disciples them. Temptation to sin are sure to come. Temptation to sin are sure to come. But woe to the one through whom they come. It will come. It shall come. But how you deal with it? You see, I don't hold on unto offense. Because I realize that when you hold on to offense, you will say things, you will do things, that out of your character, out of your normal procedure. Be careful of offense. Offense kills. It kills your joy. It kills your peace. It kills your love. It kills your, your, your humbleness. Uh -huh. It pull you out. Offense is what keeps a lot of persons in misery. You're angry. You become moody. Uh huh. You want to get back at somebody. But God is saying that. Be very careful of offense. Please. Offense itself cripple you. It eat you out like cancer. Uh -huh. And demise or deplete the love of God that is inside of you. Uh -huh. It's because of offense why you can't love. It is because of offense while you can't care for somebody. It is because of offense 
you don't care about nobody else's feelings. It is because of, of offense why you can't keep a job. It is because of offense why you can't keep a relationship. I say offense will come. But it's how you deal with it. Ah, uh, I'm a replica of how persons try to offend me. But in every action, there will be a reaction. Ah, uh, when I examine the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12, hatred store up strive. For hatred to come, you got to feel discouraged. Ah, uh, because the first attacks of the enemy is to send offense. Send somebody to offend you. Probably maybe on a doctor appointment. Uh huh. And somebody offend you. Maybe you may go into the grocery store and somebody offend you by stepping in front of you. Uh huh. By offending you by cutting their eyes. Uh -huh. Or by our dirty body language. But it's how you react. It's how you react. I realize that the only way you can neutralize offense. Is by using the word. Lean not unto your own understanding. But in all your ways you must acknowledge him. You offend me. I'm asking God for direction. One of the things that I know. One of the key component. That I use. When offense rise. And for me not to feel discouraged. I always use this as my mechanism. As, my, as I use to diffuse this bomb. Known as offense. What would God do? If Jesus Christ was here and this individual does, does this to me, what will Jesus do? Sometimes you have to take yourself out of, the, out of the equation and put in Jesus Christ. And before you retaliate by your words or by your action or by your deeds, if you, when you put Jesus Christ in the midst of it, you are basically telling yourself and also telling God, God, what would you do in this offense? Uh-huh. But if you remove God, then you, re then you will react in offensive words by others by retaliating. Greetings to everybody again. Greetings to everybody, nations, worldwide, near and far. I don't want to skip out nobody. Right? So be very careful of all persons offended you. Now David go through it as well. David realized that Ziplock was burned down to the ground. Ah. Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 30. David realized that Ziplock was burned onto the ground. That was harsh enough. That was harsh enough to know that David comes from war. And realize that his entire home was burned down to the ground. His family was being taken away. That is enough that will upset anyone. But what was so ironic and so painful about this scripture, about this verse, that many of you oversight are overlooked, that the same person that went to war with David and come home and saw that everything was burned down to the ground the same person turned on david his own friends turned on david ah uh, his own his own soldiers them turned on david and begins to blame david by offending david ah uh, what am i saying that blame game will cause offense i said blame games he say he, he say she say uh, will cause a lot of offense. Uh, now David himself in 1 Samuel chapter 30. David did not react. David did not say anything. David begins to allow himself and said, what would Jesus do? David learned the mechanism how to defuse offense. David went on to learn to encourage himself in the Lord. David could have hold on to the offense and retaliate back. But David know who he trusts in, who he believes in. And David decided that, hey, I'm not going to hold on to this offense. 
Do you know that's because of offense? Cause a lot of person to leave church? Do you know that it's because of offense? Uh, say some person, I'm not going to come back to church. But it's so ironic and so hypocrite we are as believers. Because if you are working and somebody offended you at work, you will never say that you will not go back to work. You would take up your bag, take up your bag, press your clothes, and still go back to work. No matter how much offense person has offended you at work or at your business place, you will still go back to work. But when somebody offends you at church, you don't want to go back. Are you pleasing man or are you pleasing God? Are you a man pleaser or a God pleaser? Answer my question. Ah. Uh, because first offend you. Ah. Uh, at work. And no matter if rain falls, sunshine, snow come. You still got work. But when it comes to church, when somebody step on your can. Or somebody did not acknowledge your name. Or your tiger. Or your profession. Uh huh. I did not allow you to hold the mic. You feel so offended. I'm not going back to that church. You're a man pleaser. Uh -huh. And you jump from church to church. Look at it. And ironic. Uh -huh. You didn't know if, And yet still. If you reverse it. You will still go work. Uh -huh. And if you come to the test. You can't even keep malice with the co-worker. Even when your boss offend you. Who will pay you your money. And your boss offended you. Uh, by making you feel discouraged by offended you you still have to talk to the boss no matter who you are the next day you put on your clothes and you still have to talk to the boss although the boss or your superior or your manager offended you but yet still when you come to church and somebody offended you you start walk like crab you start avoid them you start to disrespect them you're a bunch of hypocrites you're a man pleaser. And this is facts and this is reality. Many persons walk out of church because of offense. And offense can come by person not turning up on time. Offense can cause by misunderstanding. Offense can cause by various different times of means to offend you. But yet still God is saying that be careful of offense. And as, I, and as I always said, in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9 said about offense. Uh -huh. Ooh, 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 eh, ooh, whoever covers an offense. Because you have person who cover offense. Whoever cover offense, seek love. When somebody offend you. Leave a gift for the altar. I'm going to make it right. It's not for them, but it's for, it's for your peace of mind. My mind is on perfect peace that stayed on him. So if somebody offend you, yeah, cover it. Seek love. Seek God's face. Seek the creator. Oh, give that unto you. Glory be to God. Offense will come and offense will go. Let me read it again just for your knowledge. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9, the Bible said that whosoever covereth an offense, seek love, but he who repeat a matter separate close friends. It is because of offense that cause a lot of friendship to mash up. It is because of offense that cause mother not to speak to their to their child it is because of offense that cause wife or husband not to speak to each other it is because of offense that because of your family relative you will not be at the family reunion offense offense is what separating families offense is what separating church families offense has caused you not to grow offense has caused you not to have a prayer life because every time that you went to pray the offense still pops up. Ah, uh -huh. the matter still pops up. 
let me repeat myself. I said, offense will separate friends. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9 again, it said, whosoever covereth an offense. You offend me, sister? Let's talk. Let's reason together. Let's see how we can dealt with this and get it over with and move on. We can't be our brother's keeper. keeper. We can't be our brother's keeper and being offended by our brothers and hold it in our heart. It will kill you. It will cause you to get stroked. It will cause you, offense will cause you to get idiot. Ah, uh, when a, siri, a simple sorry can kill that offense. I didn't mean it. Can kill that offense. Ah, uh, it's just a misunderstanding. Can kill an offense. That giant, that cancer that is lurking in many of you. In me and even you. Because I'm not excluding myself. Glory to God. I love this. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9. Whosoever covers an offense. Seek love. It did not say seek strive. It did not say seek hatred. It did not say seek retaliation. Or to get back at the person. The Bible did not say seek hunger. Or ambush them or sabotage them. The Bible said that what? Whosoever cover an offense, if I've been hurt by an offense, just seek some love, the man. Seek God love. But he who repeat, you keep on repeating it, a matter separates close friends. Mighty God. I love this. I love this. If you have a heart against somebody because they offended you, ah, uh, go make it right, man. Offense will kill you. Make it right with your sister. Make it right with your brother. Offense. And as I'm saying to you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by, by offense. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Every time that you heard about the person's name. Even that offended you. Do you know that many, many persons has been offended by if somebody call a particular person's name? You so simple it is. When somebody has been offended by, by an offender, the one that is offended, just hearing or hearing or listening somebody else's name that offended you, it irritates you. It changes your mood. It changes your own countenance. Your body begins to change. Your voice begins to change. Your eyes begins to change. Your lips begins to change. Why? If I ever have our enemy spirit, ah, because you keep it in your heart. I say offense itself is not dangerous. It's when you hug up the offense like this. It's become dangerous. Killing you slowly, but surely. Don't be offended. By person's words, by the action, uh, by your spouse's action, by your spouse's words. Offense is dangerous. And offense is what killing a lot of us as believers in this time and also in this season. Many persons will never grow. Some persons will never see the face of God because they hold on to the offense. Some even go to the extent, I will hold on to this till my deathbed. Then if you hold on to the offense to your deathbed, then hell I go pick you up. Let me say it again. If you hold on to that offense that that individual has done, whether directly or indirectly, and many of you guys have said in your word that you will hold on to this offense to your deathbed. You now forgive them. You could have preached like Paul. You could have sing like Silas. You could have been nightingale singing. Or hummingbird singing. Hell now, hell now miss you. Because when you hold on to an offense, you will get bitter. You will hold on unforgiveness. Retaliation. Resentment. Release it from out of your heart. You see, these are spirits of heaviness. 
that is killing us like an cancer and destroying our joy like AIDS. Let me say it again. I said you have stuff that is killing us. We call it spirit of heaviness. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. We call it spirit of heaviness. Things that weigh down your inner man. Things that you are fighting internal. And one of the things that we are fighting internal is offense. Offense is a must. God warned us that offense will come. Let me read that scripture just for your knowledge for who just joined. The Bible said that in St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world, whether you believe in God or whether you're not. Whether you're a Christian or an unsaved. Whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. Offense are come. In St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offense. Because of offense. For it must need to need be that offense comes. It will come whether you like it or not. Do not be discouraged. Let's continue here. But woe that man by whom the offense come. Offense will come. They offense Jesus Christ. But he stand tall. Greetings to Pastor Granville. One of my great spiritual father from out of St. and greetings, man of God, reverend. We call him pastor, but I call him bishop. Granville from out of St. and greetings, man of God. Greetings to all my daughters and sons, spiritual sons, spiritual daughters out there. I'm saying release offense. Offense make you miserable. Offense make you moody. Offense make your character change. Offense make you have headache. Offense will make you have high blood pressure. Offense, when you hold on to these offenses, you will never have a happy life. I say, when you hold on to offense, you will never have a happy life. You will never smile. You will never be at peace. And you will never truly love because of offense. Offense will come. We as human beings, we have to learn to forgive. And forget and release people from out of our minds. Sometimes the person that offend you don't even know. Sometimes the person that offend you don't even realize. And you hold on into their deathbed. And to run up your blood pressure. Causing your mind grain headache. Causing your body not to function in the way. Release people. I said in every action there's a reaction. Uh-huh. Judas offend Jesus Christ. By how? By sell him out. Somebody said that I, I struggle with that. So too. So it's good to confess when you're struggling with, an, with offense. Yes, man. It's good. People of God, I'm seeing offense killing a lot of Christians. Killing a lot of Christians. In church. Person don't say good morning to them. They're out there. They get offended. Just good morning. People stop coming to church because someone did not say good morning to them at church. Just good morning. Just because someone did not call you on the cellular phone and say church service start, people get offend, um, um, offended by that. And the enemy use it like a rolling coaster to rip Christians apart from the presence of God. People get offended. Uh -huh. Just because a person did not read the same color code like them, or the same dress color like them, or the pants color like them, people find get offended for the simplest thing because the person did not give them a call off their cellular phone. People get offended. People get offended because the person said that I'm not lending you my money or my Bible or my pen. You see how simple it is? These are the simplest things that will cause a person to get offended and go to hell. And the enemy use it as a tool to cut and pierce and juke and hurt 
and leave people in sorrow and pain offense <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry my apology because of offense offense is what killing many of us as believers and offense leads to pride and as i always said the simplest thing that can cause can kill offense i'm sorry i didn't mean it it is a misunderstanding my apology a simple sorry do you know that it is the easiest thing to tell to do one of the hardest thing to do and one of the easiest thing to do even with christians it is easy for a believer or an unbeliever. It is, it is easy for a Christian and a person who are not a Christian to tell people their mind. But one of the hardest things to do for many of us as believers and as Christian to say this, I am sorry. I didn't mean it. Sorry if I offended you sorry if i do this i didn't expect that this would go we are not too big to apologize it helps to kill offense we are not too big to say i am sorry it helps to kill offense i said offense even in your marital life even at, even at your work it will come your husband will offend you your wife will offend you but in every action, there's a reaction. When Judas bring the soldiers them, he offend God. Uh-huh. Peter, retaliate. Uh-huh. By getting hungry in his feelings, in his emotions. Uh-huh. Come out of the spirit of God. Chop off the man he is. Jesus said, that's not my way to deal with somebody offended you. He said, He said, Peter, if you live by the sword, you shall die by the sword. Why are you being offended? Why are you making simple things out of a mountain? Why are you making simple things out of a mountain? Just say that I am sorry. This is where we go wrong. Admit and say, I'm sorry. You're not perfect. He or she is not perfect. Your spouse is not perfect. Your family is not perfect. Your mother is not perfect. Your aunt is not perfect. And I'm sure you are not perfect. And as I said before, we are a bunch of hypocrites that are going to church. Why do you say the apostle read? Why do you say it, man of God? Because if somebody offend you at work, or your boss offend you at work, uh-huh. Or your manager offend you at work. Or your co-worker offend you at work. You will still go back to work the next day. Press your clothes. No care how upset you are. And go to work. You will never walk off that job that easily. Uh-huh. And if your boss even offended you. In any means possible, or your manager, you still have to talk to your boss. You can't shut your mouth and not talk to her and not talk to him. You have to be speaking to your boss or your superior, regardless of how the person offended you. But yet, still, when you come to church, I don't come back to church because this person offended you. And you walk out of church. You're a bunch of hypocrites. You're a pleasing man that, or you're pleasing God. God is going to judge you. God is going to judge you. I can guarantee you. And these are the simplest things make person don't see the face of God. Offense is a will come. It shall come. It shall come. And that's why I'm saying this to you in, in Proverbs chapter 19 verse 11. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Good sense. Come on, sense. Good sense makes one slow to hunger. 
somebody offend me. You know, many times I went into a public space to pay a bills. And somebody offend me. I'm just shit my head. I walk away. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Good sense makes me makes one slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook an offense. Let me read it again. I said Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Good sense makes one slow to hunger. And it is. It is his glory to overlook, overlook, oversight. Forget about it. Offense and offense. Many times persons offend me, as I said before. Probably maybe going to pay a light bill, a water bill, the rent. The landlord offended you. Your children offended you. Your boss offended you. Your church member offended you. Sometimes I don't shake my head. Because I want to be at peace with myself. I'm not going to allow people to offend to let me be sad for the rest of my day. I have a joy, I have the joy of God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. But because of offense, you can't serve God with gladness. And I learned the mechanism. I have built the mechanism to shake my head sometimes and walk away. Uh huh. You can be offended by a person not answering you. People get offended because a person not answer them. Whether it's on the work or by the cell the phone. They get angry because somebody did not answer them. They, they keep silent. They keep off, they, they being off, offended. Offense is killing us like cancer. Slowly but surely. And then it's then it overtake us like when someone a full born AIDS or corona. Offense is suffocating us. Offense, brothers and sisters, is suffocating us. We can't breathe. We can't talk. Our voice begins to change. This is what offense does. It's suffocating us that we can't speak. I don't know why God allowed me to do that illustration. Offense is like, like a card. You're putting a card around your neck and tight, 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 tight. It's killing you. Take the card of offense off your neck. Go make it right with the brothers and sisters. It's not for them, but it's for you. It is for your joy, it is for your peace, and it is for your love. I'm saying that you're not doing it for them. Only you are doing it for yourself. Make it make peace with your brothers. Forgive them. Do you know how much person you offend? Do you know how much person you offend? You are looking at, at how persons offended you. But do you know how much person you offend? Directly and indirectly. Do you know how much? And if you're all done and offense or offense, you are surely going to hell without any apology. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Repent. Turn around your dirty ways. Your nasty ways. Your nasty attitude. That you have in your heart. So I now nah forgive the individual to my deathbed. Because they offend you. They did not attend to the funeral. So you're offended by that. They did not attend to the banquet. So you're offended. Or your party. Or your invitation. Or because they did not eat your food. You're going to get offended. The devil is a liar. You're going to go to hell if you don't forgive. I leave that one. I would not let it go any further. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give no offense to the Jews. Give no offense to people. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 32 Give no offense to the Jews or to the Greek or to the church of God. Give no offense. Me say offense are kill we. Give no offense. Right? 1 Peter chapter 2 verse, verse 8 And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Let me read. I love that one. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 8 And a stone of stumbling And a rock of offense They stumble because they dis disobey The word as they were destined to do Forgive and let go And let go offense You were dead with that offense in your heart And you will be showing where you are going to help And everything is written into the Lamb's book of light Into the Lamb's book of life My apology Offense. Offense. Offense is killing us one by one. One by one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another. Tender heart. Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgive you. You can't say we are Christian and we are all upon offense till we get dead. I hope you learned something. Release the individual out of your heart. And get rid of offense. I want to say this to you. I, 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 I'm, I'm reading something here. It said, uh, what, is the, what is the root cause of offense? What is the root cause of offense? Because I want to get this. I, I'm just seeing this. What is the root cause of offense? One of the most common reasons people take offense is insecurity insecurities are based on one self concept ideas and feeling about self when self concept is challenged then one will question the perception of self and insecurities What does it mean to take up offense? What does it mean to take up offense? To become anger or upset by something that another person has said or done. To be offended by something he or she took offense when I suggested whether it's words, gifts, promotions, or somebody present, or a blessing, etc. How do you overcome the spirit of offense? How do you overcome the spirit of offense? First, recognize when we are hurt. First, it is important to realize when we have been felt offended. How do we overcome the spirit of offense? Bring our heart to God and not others or other persons. How does you overcome the spirit of offense? My God. Forgive the other person or persons. How does we overcome the spirit of offense? Ask God to reveal any unresolved issues or problems in our heart. How we overcome the spirit of offense? Pray against future offense or attacks. What is spirit or spirit of offense? What it means to what is the spirit? What is spirit of offense? A spirit of offense is a feeling of resentful because of actual or perceived insult. Sometimes 
it is an actual insult or other times it is an unintended sight or uh, that we misinterpret or misunderstood regardless of the intent or not we still have to deal with issues of our hurt feelings i'm talking about offense here I'm talking about offense i hope you learned something new uh -huh. what does you call what do you call a person who is easily offended what do our uh, what do we do call a person uh, oh call a person that is easy what do, what do we call a person that is easily offended a person that is easily easily offended i call a person irritable touchy thin skin hostile rude easily angered impatient he or she is constantly complaining and using insult body language grudgeful spiteful revengeful and very moody what do you call persons who are easily offended let me repeat myself what do you call a person who is easily offended easily offended irritable touchy thin skin hostile rude easily angered impatient he or she is constantly complaining and using insult body language cut eye fan off nigger finger uh-huh grudgeful spiteful revengeful very moody let me ask you a question all of this that i that i just mentioned when you call a person that is very are easily offended is god irritable no that's what you can do god something and he said that come to him and apologize is god touchy no he's faithful and just to forgive you is god thin skin no uh he fall on the just and the unjust you fall at seven times but you shall rise again uh is god hostile towards us no is god rude rude towards us no is god easily get anger no is god impatient no is god easily complaining to us no is god is is god ever use or jesus christ ever use insult language to you body language no is the god that we serve grudgeful no is jesus christ spiteful no is jesus christ revengeful no is jesus christ moody no all of this is the devil all of this that i call, carry, call a while ago when a person is easily offended the devil put irritable in them they become touchy that's what the devil does they become thin skin they are very hostile that's the devil mentality very rude uh -huh. because love is not rude love is patient love is kind uh-huh when a person easily offended they're easily anger god is not anger a soft answer turn away wrath and grievous words of anger uh -huh. when a person is easily offended they are very impatient that's all the devil is to get back revenge when a person is easily offended they are they are constantly complaining they have a murmur street they murmur they complain for everything when a person is easily offended they use body language that's the devil cut eye fan off mega finger bend down and show them buttos tell people your mind when a person is easily angry this is the devil they are very grudgeful 
very spiteful. I'm going to get back at a person there because the person shouldn't do me this. That's the demon. No person not with demons. Very disobedient. Very revengeful. Very moody. I hope you learn a lot. And I will not go any further because a whole lot towards this. I hope you learn a lot. And I'm saying this to you again. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of discouragement. Do not be discouraged because of offense. Do not be discouraged because of retaliation. Do not be discouraged because you want to get back at the individual. Don't do that. That's not of God. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I may be hit rock bottom in my discouragement. But I shall rise again. Yeah man. A person has caused your demise by offending you. You got low self-esteem. You feel discouraged. But God is a rise up man. Shake off that. Don't make because of offense while you don't sing again. Don't make because of people's offense while you don't preach again. Don't feel discouraged or offended by persons, by your boyfriend, by your girlfriend. That you don't want to love anyone again. Don't feel offended by your grandmother, by your mother. That you stay away from your families. Don't feel offended because the person did not eat your food or you eat the person's food. Everybody have a choice. God gave us a choice. A freedom of choice to make the right choice. He did not force us. He, he could have. But he gave us a freedom of choice. Everybody have the freedom of choice. Don't feel offended. Don't feel offended because someone did not lend you the money. They have a choice. Yes or no. Offense comes in various different types of ways. God bless you. Until next time. Be, in, be encouraged. I love you. With the love of the Lord. And it is my duty. It is my mandate. To ensure that the word of God. Embedded in your spirit. I want you to see heaven. I want you to know God. I want God to love upon, love upon you. I want you to love upon, lo love upon God. We don't know resentment. We don't know offense. We don't have no one in your mind, in your thoughts. Uh -huh. Remember the Lord said that his ways is not your ways. For as high as the heaven is, so is his ways. Because of offense, it caused you not to work in your future. You don't want to study. You don't want to love. You don't want to care. You don't want to get married. You don't want a promotion. You don't want to go back to school. You don't want to be around family. You want to lock away yourself. So, there is, so the enemies can use that to, for you to commit suicide. The devil is a liar. You have been offended because you did not get the promotion. The Lord account all things joy. All things work together for good. For those who love the Lord. You did not get the razor pay. You mean offended by that? God know why. God know best. Hmm? The name of God is a strong tower and the righteous shall run into it and shall be saved. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging bread. Trust God. Trust the process. I trust Him. I have been offended by pastors, by people, and I have offended a lot of persons. And if somebody can offend me, I have to learn to forgive. Because I have offended a lot of persons. Release people out of your heart. How can you want your Heavenly Father to forgive you? And you don't forgive somebody that offended you. How you want to say that you love God? Uh -huh. That you have never seen. And people that offended you, who you can see. You don't love them. 
they offended God. They mocked him. They jeer him. They gave him vinegar for drink. They offended our Lord. They pierced him side. But Jesus Christ did not hold on to the offense that they have mocked him and jeered him and cut him and give him vinegar to drink. What did Jesus do? Jesus said on his deathbed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. Lego offense. It's not going to make it better. Offense is going to make it bitter. I said, Offense is not going to make you better. It's going to make you bitter. Probably I'm over my glass. Offense will not make you better. It will make you bitter. God don't want you to be bittered by offense. God wants you to be bettered in love and in his presence. I hope you learned something new. Go out with a banger, with joy, with peace, and with love. When somebody offended, you can't smile, you can't laugh. I can laugh, I can smile because I don't hold on to offense. I dealt with the matter and I move on. Love you with the love of the Lord. Keep strong. Stay with God. In Jesus' name. Bless you. Until next time. This is your humble servant of God. That said that smile a while. And give your face a rest. Smile a while. Show your teeth. And give your gum a rest. Have a wonderful day everybody. Have a pleasant day. Don't make your day start bad. Start it good. Start a day well. You don't need person to start a day well. Just start to smile. Walk with God. Talk with God. Smile, man. Your rent one pay, still smile. Your bills one pay, still, still, still smile. A smile a day keep the devil away. Because your joy is your strength. It keeps you going. Ah. Uh -huh. When you smile, just smile. Do that for God. Just smile. No matter what, smile. Smile. Be at peace with yourself by smiling. I'm a man of God that loves you. And my desire is for you to be happy. Nothing more, nothing less. And one of the craziest things that I always do in life is your smile through my good times and through my bad times you may be down but you're not out I said you may be down but you're not out you're still in the land of the living just smile God bless you have a beautiful beautiful day wherever you go God bless you going in and you're coming out love you you can messenger me you can messenger me. Glory be to God. And thanks again to all individuals that be a part of my life, both internally and externally, who have saw the mandate upon my life and helps me to push me to continue to teach, to preach, to motivate, to counsel, to pray for the individuals thank you so much many times I'm offended to give up but because the love of God that is inside of me I can't and I can't be sidetracked and I can't give up by a person's offense because of you that are depending upon me no matter how my life may go ups and down, I can't give up. Because you are depending upon me. Love you. Only thing my desire is for you to serve God. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. God bless you. Until next time.
in Jesus' name. This is your wise man here saying bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Can't give up, won't give up, will not give up, shall not give up, will never give up. Love you. Keep that smile going. <laughs> Keep that smile going. Keep that smile going. Blessings.